guys, welcome back to our channel. Today is another Bible study day, and today we are going to be doing more of an in-depth Bible study out of James chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. So, to start us off, the author of James is James, the brother of Jesus, and it's written to the Jewish Christian churches outside of Palestine, or Palestine, however you say it. And the overall theme of this chapter is the author expressing how we as Christians are to live out our faith. So we're going to start out by reading the chapter, which is James 2, 1 through 13. It says, My brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, and if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, you sit here in a good place, while you say to the poor man, you stand over there, or sit down at my feet, have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man, are not the rich the ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you into court? Are they not the ones who blaspheme the honorable name by which you were called? If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well, but if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of all of it. For he who said, do not commit adultery also said do not murder if you do not commit adultery but do murder you have become a transgressor of the law so speak and act as those who are to be judged under the law of liberty for judgment is without mercy to one who has shown no mercy mercy triumphs over judgment verse one says my brothers show no partiality as you hold the faith in our lord jesus christ the lord of glory so for verse one we are going to read the commentary Partiality as you hold the faith. There is no place for prejudice in the life of faith. Partiality combines a group of terms signifying to accept or judge according to face and refers to favoritism shown on the basis of status in society. Jesus, according to James, is the exalted and glorious Lord and is always to be thought of as such. We're all faced with the temptation to show partiality in everyday life, I feel like. Um, especially when we're in crowds or in groups of people. We have to be mindful of that and we have to remind ourselves that action is frowned upon as Christians. Verses 2 through 4 say, For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothes also comes in, and if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, You sit here in a good place, while you say to the poor man, You stand over there, or sit down at my feet. Have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? So where it says assembly, it's meaning in the church house. He's giving a comparison of two men, one with gold rings and fine clothing, one with shabby clothing. As Christians, we are not to show favoritism between the two. If we fall into this temptation, we're ultimately putting ourselves in the place of a judge, which is something that we're instructed not to do. And we actually just went over this in Romans 2, 1 through 11. That was last week's Bible study. So um, pretty fresh on our minds. But if you want to see where that is, you can go read Romans chapter 2. And in these verses, it also says that that means that your mind is already full of evil thoughts. And even though you might not think it evil to make those distinctions or to, I don't know, like seek out a person who's more fitting to the type of person that you would prefer to be around or associate yourself with, then you are already being a judge in that way. So that's something to be um, watchful of in your own actions. Verse 5 says, Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom? which he has promised to those who love him. And on that one, we're also going to read the commentary. And it says, where it says, chosen to be rich in faith. It says, um, here James is using the language of election. He's declaring that the poor have a special place in God's economy of salvation. 
they are rich in an eternal sense because they are heirs of the kingdom. So we just felt like that one kind of explained that verse probably better than we could have. Verses six through seven say, But you have dishonored the poor man. Are not the rich ones the ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you into courts? Are they not the ones who blaspheme the honorable name by which you were called? These verses are talking about how the rich men in those times often used their positions and money for evil and to take away from the poor. The commentary says that this happening was the primary reason for the revolts in Galilee that led to the war of AD 66 through 70. James here is asking, why would you treat these men better than the poor man who isn't mixed up in these bad things and isn't using their wealth and their position to make somebody else's life more miserable? Like these people should be lifted higher and thought of as better people than the people who are cheating poor people. Verses 8 through 11 says, If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law of transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of all of it. For he who said... Do not commit adultery. Also said, do not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but do murder, <laughs> he's coming on. You have become a transgressor of the law. So verses eight and nine are kind of self-explanatory. Basically, partiality, favoritism, discrimination are violations of God's law of love to love your neighbor. So for verses ten and eleven, I'm going to read a part of the commentary. The law was considered an interdependent whole, and any fraction constituted a breaking of the law as a whole. So we must work hard not to break any of the law. We have to be um, ever aware of the law so that we can try our best not to break any of that law. We must speak and act in accordance with God's law because we know of the coming judgment. Every Christian will be judged by God, as it says in 2 Corinthians 5.10. Verse 13 says, For judgment is without mercy to one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. So for 13, I'm going to read the commentary. For judgment is without mercy to one who has shown no mercy. This proverbial saying sums up the implications of verses 1 through 12 and leads into the faith without works discussion in verses 14 through 26 which is what we'll do next week it was the core of roman law but more importantly it is central to god's law what you do to others will be done to you in judgment mercy triumphs over judgment does not in this context mean that God's mercy is extended to believers at the judgment. Rather, believers' acts of mercy will mean that they are vindicated at the judgment. Mercy was an essential Old Testament requirement for dealing with the poor. Mercy is likewise a requirement of believers in the New Testament, or they will experience God's judgment rather than his mercy. <laughs> but the truth is we're all probably more guilty of this sin than what we would like to admit. We all like do that quick judgment of how a person looks or how they talk or how they present themselves and our actions towards them are dependent on those things and James very clearly tells us that we should be watchful so that we can make sure that our actions are in line with God's law of love. So now after studying this, we know to be more careful and watchful of this temptation. So that is it for this Bible study. We hope you guys enjoyed Bible studying with us. We hope you guys learned something because we definitely did. And we can use this information to grow closer to God and hopefully become more in line with his will for our lives. We also post videos on Wednesdays and Fridays. Wednesdays, we're going through a book called Anxious for Nothing by John MacArthur. So if you have anxiety and you think that you might be interested in that book, it's got a lot of um, information and Bible verses and just encouragement to help us to know how to work against living in a state of anxiety. So if you think those videos might be good for you, then check out all the videos titled Anxious for Nothing on our channel and catch us on Wednesday. On Fridays, we post fun videos. We usually do makeup, fashion, DIYs, food, anything that piques our interest that week. Yep. So be sure to join us 
then also and if you do enjoy our videos be sure to like and subscribe to our channel and if you want to be notified when we upload hit the little bell after you subscribe we hope you guys have a great day we hope you have a good week and don't forget to shine we'll see you in the next one bye, bye.